three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Shut down. was I thinking? Now let's get to a quick briefing as to what the heck you just saw. Uh, that was crazy, okay? Now let's get into what was really supposed to happen. So, essentially, on this attempt, I tried launching Columbia on two boosters and one motor on Columbia herself, which was a D12-9. The others were D12-7 SD's motors, which had an average thrust of around 30 to 31 newtons. I don't remember the exact number, but essentially, I tried to launch all three rockets at once. I'm trying to get Columbia off the ground so it can make its inaugural test flight just to see like a proof of concept just to see if it'll actually work for future missions if you guys don't really know what i'm talking about or it sounds really sketchy to you <clears throat> i highly suggest going down the description down below and watching that video first i have a link to it um so that it better explains what the heck i'm talking about let's get into some upgrades that i have for this launch versus last launch i put in some flame sensors for this launch um because i mean first of all you're dealing with three rockets which is already enough for me so i had to get three flame sensors one for each flame trench i was just trying to launch all three essentially at the same time and these flame sensors would validate that all three are lit using integers now you're probably thinking how the heck does you know how does this even work the flame sensor works like this at least the ones that i got when there is no flame detected it reads a value or about, you know, around a value about 1,000 to 1,023, no higher than that. That's when there's no fire. When there is fire in front of this sensor, it essentially reads anything below 30 um, or greater than 20. So, there was one um, right below Columbia, right below that motor mount, and there was one in each booster chamber. And when Columbia's motor went off, it, uh... <laughs> It disintegrated the flame trench. And you probably guys are probably like, how the heck did this happen? This has to be a crazy malfunction on your part. And I hate to say it, but you're right. I decided to make the trench out of the worst, the worst element, aluminum. Aluminum can. You guys are probably already booing me. I can, I can already feel it. I know, I know, I know. This is this is terrible. I, this, I can't believe I did it out of aluminum. And guess what it was covered in? Aluminum foil. I mean, I can already see the dislikes flowing in now. Oh my god. And if you guys don't know, I mean, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just being funny. If you guys don't know, when aluminum powder specifically, or just aluminum itself, is subjected to a crap ton of heat, it kind of starts to get flammable. So when that ejection charge occurred about 4.5 to 5 seconds after main or the main engine burnout, it combusted almost immediately. Like <laughs> I thought, you know, it was I thought the motor was just gonna shoot out of the trench and there were gonna be no more problems. Or because there was that aluminum powder on the pad from you know the remains of the trench, uh, it caused quite a bit of an inferno, as you can see. Um, you're probably wondering, Matthew, why the other two not fired? Like I said there was a flame sensor right right in Columbia's you know motor trench and that trench got completely destroyed um, essentially the sensor just could not read the values quick enough um, there was no record of any sort of value drop because there was no SD card storage file anywhere um, so <laughs> I know this is kind of a ridiculous launch attempt um, I should have um, logged it um, but the reason why I didn't log is because it slowed down the computer, it slowed down the clock cycles, and it just became a massive problem. So I just decided not to do that. I, you know, I didn't have a fire extinguisher, now I will, because that was very dangerous. So, anyways, let's get into the up, like, just f the future of this entire program, because this is like update number, I don't know what, of this entire project. I've been working on it for over a year now. Now, it is finally time to get into the brand new concept that I have in mind for the future of this project, and I hate to say it, but it doesn't involve a glider. It doesn't involve Columbia. Um, Columbia may make a return one day, um, gracefully so, you know, riding away on two boosters and, uh, you know, on a motor itself, just like how I did it, or I tried to do it, but unfortunately, we're just gonna have to put Columbia on the side for now, um, cause this new concept is gonna be rolling into town, and, um, without further ado, I'm just gonna shut up, and, uh, here's the trailer.
hope you, uh, I hope you like that new concept. Um, I'm gonna be making, um, kind of like a separate series, um, from this one, um, for that specifically. Um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you think that's cool, if you think I should just stick with Columbia and just keep trying. Um, just let me know what you think. Um, I'm also gonna show you a picture of the launch pad after. Here's it now. <gasps> I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video somehow. Uh, it was quite long, um, somewhat. Um, but don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel um, if you enjoy ro uh, model rocketry and, you know, weather and, like, people like, you know, Reed Tim or Tim Samaris or if you're just a weather geek like me um, or you just love science, then this is the channel for you. I highly encourage you to subscribe. Only if you want to. Only if you want to. I'm not, you know, gonna come through that screen and force you to subscribe. So, um, it's all up to you. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.